Hey, hey. <laughs> I ain't even going to explain this. You're going to see it. Yeah, and then we're going to do a little video later. Uh, we got the big block. We're going to do some oil pressure talk and some flywheel talk. But right now, I got to spend some quality time with the Master Blaster back here. Got my son in town, and uh, he's trying to rejuvenate uh, the old man's uh, technique, even though we don't have a, a uh, kiln. So, uh, yeah. Maybe these... Uh, Maybe these damn gear shift knobs will uh, start coming out of here like the original plan was. All right, I'll turn it back on. We're back in the garage with Easy Jeezy. We got a lot to cover today. We got the 2276 back in the desert car, and uh, we're gonna fire that up here in just a minute. And we're gonna talk uh, about flywheels because I did get a lot of questions and comments in the flywheel video. We're also going to talk a little bit about oil pressure. That's always an ongoing issue. Uh, what kind of oil and uh, oil pumps and pressure in general. What kind of pressure should I have in an idle? What uh, pressure should I have uh, after it's warmed up? So we're going to cover all that uh, right now. Let's get this thing turned around and get the show on the road. First thing we're going to do is uh, get her fired up. I think I'll just put it in the stand here for a second. Uh, I'm going to, uh, I got my infrared gun here. I'm just going to shoot the side of the case to show you uh, what it's at. It's just at uh, room temperature, 77 degrees, outdoor temperature. So the engine's cold, and we're just going to do a cold start, basically. Okay, what I've done is take out the oil sending unit and I plugged in a refrigeration gauge and I made myself a nice oily mess getting this all set up. Uh, I don't know if you can hear me over that exhaust, it's pretty close. But you can see there, we're idling probably a thousand RPM, a little more, and we're like 55. And I'm just running plain old uh, 10W30. Uh, conventional oil in it, nothing special because I only have single valve springs. Uh, I forgot to tighten this clamp here. I put the clamp in position, but I forgot to tighten it down. And uh, I started it up, and uh, as soon as it went to the cooling mode, I gave it a little gas, revved it, and man, it just shot all over the place. I don't, made a mess here on the floor and uh, got that cleaned up, but yeah. Uh, let's see, how am I going to do this here? I'm going to just rev it a little bit and uh, try not to burn my hose here. You shouldn't uh, accelerate it from uh, the side, but... Okay, when you, when you see the, when you see the needle moving around like that, what you're witnessing is the, uh, the relief valves. There's little springs on both ends of the engine. This is a dual relief case and it at a certain pressure it will just relieve that oil instead of keeping the pressure in those passages and it'll dump it back into the crankcase. Now I'm just running straight old uh, 10W30 Valvoline 10W30 conventional oil. I'm not really worried about it. Uh, I think I could have been a little bit cleaner. I hope you can hear me over all of this. Now, uh, this had a 30 millimeter oil pump. I'm going to leave that engine run because we're going to warm this thing up and you're going to see that oil pressure change. I'm just going to let it idle. Uh, now, what when we're talking about different oil pumps, uh, some of the early cars had 22 millimeter oil pumps, and the later 1600 dual ports had 26 millimeter. Well, what exactly does that mean? Here is a oil pump right here, 
it's driven by the front of the camshaft, the end of the camshaft, on this piece right back here. And when you talk about those different size, uh, you know, 30 millimeter, what they're talking about, see the 30 up there on the top? width of the gear. The wider the gear, the more oil pressure you get. Now, unfortunately, I did not uh, measure the oil pressure prior to taking that engine apart. Uh, there's not a lot you can do to change it, uh, but what I decided to do was put a 26 millimeter pump in that had an oil filter because I don't like all these oil filters in the back. And crazily enough, right now, I'm running uh, the stock oil filter screen. You can see that there. That's just in case I got a little silicone floating around in there from those uh, base of those cylinders. It should come off and get caught on the screen instead of going into the pump. And now I'm, I'm filtering the oil. It's not as good as a full flow system, but it's the next best thing. And it's not... It's not below the engine, so I'm not worried about rocks hitting it. You can see where I've got oil dripping where I made my connections there. It's, it's not leaking, it's just oil that's splattered all over and that I made a mess hooking things up. Okay, so it's been running for a little bit. Uh, not that long, but let's see what the temperature's done. It's up to 112 degrees. It's idling at the same speed. And see that oil pressure is coming down. And it'll keep coming down as it, will, as it, as it moves, see? Now, what does the book say the oil pressure should be? It's going to vary from engine to engine and the weight of the oil and the temperatures, of course. But it says at... Uh, 2,500 RPM, you should have a minimum of 28 PSI. Well, that's cruising speed. And it says if you have less than that or, uh, oil pressure, 28 PSI, that you might want to consider rebuilding your engine. So, simple as that. And uh, Now, I want to also, while that's warming up, I hope that answers some stuff on oil pressure. Uh, that oil pressure will come down to like 25, uh, but it is a 10W30 oil, a straight 30. I found really even 1540, I used to run 1540 diesel oil in it, uh, not this engine, but another engine that I've had. This, all this setup is new to me, and like I say, I'm really not too keen on all these hoses. There was a lot of air in the line, and uh, I had to crank it without starting it for quite a while to get all that oil into the system. Uh, I see something else I don't like either. I don't like the way this oil is just vibrating and shaking like crazy. I may, may do something on that. Always making changes. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the flywheel weight. A lot of people were saying, should I put a light flywheel on my car? And you can see on this one, I've got a six pound weight added on to the back here. This is called an equalizer pulley. That was uh, something that uh, Dean Berg made popular and he felt that it uh, extended the life of your main bearings at higher RPM. Now, this has got an angle 120 cam. It's idling pretty smooth for an angle 120 cam. And uh, I'm pretty pleased about all of that. Let's see. Let's see if I can get this thing. I don't want to burn up my hose. When I got up there, like 60 pounds there, it uh, 
it was backing off and that's because the relief springs were opening up. So this engine's pretty tight. It's a great looking case with a great looking bearing. And so it really wouldn't have mattered in my opinion whether it had that 30 millimeter pump in it or not. I didn't put new bearings in it and that's plenty of oil pressure. That camshaft with single springs is not really designed to go uh, very uh, much over 5500 RPM anyhow. So uh, what's our temperature doing here? Okay, we're up to 140 degrees on the case temperature, which is a reflection of the oil. Now, see? Okay. So, you've got the oil cooler, which is up here. Maybe we should shoot that for, for temperature. See what was happening here. 110 degrees so we know oil was going through the cooler but there was no fan if it was a stock setup it would have had air coming across it and it, it's not in uh, it doesn't need to be cooled right now particularly and that's why you have thermostat and flaps in there inside your engine in a stock setup and this doesn't have any of that stuff and this tin work fits pretty snug for aftermarket tin now I'm kind of rambling all over the place, but I'm trying to do make more than one point in this single video. Uh, now, let's get on to flywheel weight. Flywheel weight, the factory didn't just guess at that flywheel weight. If you have a stock engine in a sedan, leave the flywheel alone. If, if Even if you've hot rotted the engine, if you've uh, added carburation or uh, changed the exhaust, there's no need to be changing that flywheel and like I said in my uh, video when the engine was torn down it had a counterweighted crankshaft so you're just taking the weight from the flywheel and putting it on the crankshaft now I went with the stock weight flywheel plus I added weight on the other end now how's that gonna affect the way the car uh, drives it's going to make it a little bit smoother when you get off-road and you're going at a real slow speed kind of rock calling and going through rough uh, stuff that you want to go slow you won't get those compression stalls where you just kill it and you don't have to slip the clutch the momentum from the flywheel will kind of keep you uh, moving and rolling uh, the old model a fords they had uh, 26 horsepower something like that and i don't know i can't remember if it was the model t or the model a but they had like a 120 pound flywheel. So low horsepower, real heavy flywheel. This is not uncommon way of doing things. Um, it also, uh, it works your clutch harder. If you have a light flywheel, you're probably gonna have to slip the clutch a little bit more every time you start and stop it. Uh, if you were just learning how to drive and didn't know how to let out the clutch, it would be much more difficult with a lightened flywheel than it would be a heavy flywheel because it just kind of gives you that inertia and it helps you get started and it keeps that engine running smoother it takes more more to stop it um, on decelerate probably you know I, I was reading one article about them and they said that uh, drag racers like the heavy flywheel although it it would it seems to be consistent that all the time guys want to put these light and flywheels on it you build a big engine you put a light and flywheel on it and you get a heavy duty uh, Kennedy clutch I'll tell you right now I'm, I'm running my two liter out here in the Baja and I'm running a stock socks clutch similar to what you would have in a bus with a stock clutch disc and it doesn't slip I'm not making that much horsepower i am got eight and a half to one compression I drove it on uh, back to Michigan and back didn't have to make any adjustments on anything I'm running stock valve heads and I'm running a super mild cam um, cam chaff has a lot to do with the characteristic of your motor it's it's the heart and soul of your engine and it's it's really going to have effect on things but I had someone send me a comment leave me a comment wanting to know 
uh, about uh, their little 1835 with a an angle, I think he said it was a 125 cam, and I said, like, that's a lot of cam for a little engine like that, and it's probably, unless it has dual two-throat carburetor, it's going to run really rough. Uh, so, as far as the flywheel goes, you're, you're not, you're not, everybody's looking for a uh, seat of the pants change, and they don't want to spend a lot of money. Well, $100, you can put a light and flywheel on it. You could do it on a stock engine and your engine might not last as long because of the vibrations and so on and so forth that you're getting more onto the bearings and stuff so um, it's, is it going to be significant? one guy was asking, he said he had a trike and it, could he uh, uh, take advantage of a light and flywheel I said sure man that would be a fun ride a nothing trike with no weight like that uh, boy that thing would be zippy as heck sometimes in traffic when you're on and off the gas having a light and flywheel might be to your advantage but other times not so so it just depends on what you want to do and how much you want to spend chances are if you get the if you get the flywheel you're going to want to do a flywheel seal and maybe uh, a new clutch disc uh, at the very minimum so some things to think about I hope that helps gives you some insight as always thanks for watching thanks for subbing easy jeezy out okay I uh, just was inside trying to cut this uh, video up and and I realized that uh, I may have started an, an oil debate and I sure as hell don't want to go there. I don't normally run uh, 10W30 Valvoline conventional oil in any of my engines. But what you just saw here for a short run and a short test, anytime I crack open a case, I figure I'm going to get contamination. It's And I don't have to break in a cam because I didn't change the camshaft. But um, I, I, nonetheless, I think there's crap in there. And this oil, I don't plan it to be in there very long at all. I'm not, I normally run uh, Valvoline VR1 30 weight and it's got a little bit of the zinc in there evidently and just kind of playing it safe with that and I I don't really have a preference as far as oils I just want to run a good quality oil I haven't had really any camshaft issues I had that one uh, 1776 that the lifter bore went to hell I don't know uh, what the heck caused that I was running double springs and so forth but uh, run whatever the hell kind of oil that you like in your car and I'm I'll probably going to be running 30 weight oil because I'm going to be running this in warm temperatures like today and I just wanted to get all that crap out of there the stock oil filter screen will be coming off this uh, remote oil filter here will be coming off I will be running it with just that single uh, oil filter that's on there that is a cheap shit oil filter because it's not going to be staying on there very long I just running this thing enough to get everything circulating through there and catch the contaminants I don't want to rev it up too much and uh, be forcing contaminants across those bearings I want the filter to catch all the crap and as you go through the first few heat cycles and those that case uh, pores of the case opens up it's going to release some of the stuff that you disturbed when you're in there cleaning things so that's that's the story on that and I want to get some clarification before I get flooded with comments about the, my oil and what I'm doing and now I'm using it so uh, there you go looks like my downspout's working Ha, 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 ha.